You know you're gonna see the best of the worst with the shit flick critic. You know you're gonna see shit that's absurd with the shit flick critic. From Pandemic the Room, the Samurai Cop Troll 2, Man of Sense of Fame, Mighty Connection 2. So come along, see the worst with me, I'm the shit flick critic. G'day everyone and welcome to The Shit Flick Critic. I'm your host, Andrew Lewis. I thought I'd do something a bit different today and delve into another medium of shitness. Animation. An animation so bad that it was voted number two on IMDb's lowest rated animations of all time. And that film is... Food Fight. Just closing up. Nothing much happens around here after dark. It's our world! Dex Dog Detective is back in the house! My Mr. Dog Detective, are you sweeping me off my feet? Sunshine's gone, bro. Brand X took my sunshine away. Food! Food! Food Fight is an animated film released in 2012 produced by Threshold Entertainment and directed by Larry Kasanov. Food Fight is notorious for its poor animation, horrendous voice acting, and gratuitous product placement. So gratuitous, in fact, that the main characters for Food Fight barely appear on the poster. Can you find them? There they are, all the way in the background. I'm just one of the out-of-focus guys. The reason why the main characters of the film aren't based on a real-life brand is that Larry was hoping after the film's inevitable popularity that the characters would have their own tie-in movie products, such as plush toys or storybooks. So basically, Food Fight was made for one reason and one reason only. To make Larry some sweet, sweet money. <laughs> Larry Kasanoff is most known for having produced the Mortal Kombat movie and its sequel, Annihilation, which he also co-wrote, meaning he could very well be responsible for the greatest line in cinema history. Mother, you're alive. Too bad you will die. In 1999, after the success of Pixar and Toy Story, Threshold decided to make their own CG family movie with a completely different premise, and it's easy to see. One is a story about a bunch of characters who are usually inanimate that come to life and cause hijinks when not in the prying eyes of humans, and the other's Toy Story. Larry even braggingly told press at the time the production began, We've got the movie, we've got the property, the place, the equipment, the talent, we're there. Do we believe our next movie, Food Fight, is going to be a huge hit? Of course we do! I appreciate your enthusiasm, Larry, but history has taught us that speaking too soon tends to be followed by tragedy. Food Fight is also notorious for its ridiculous budget, costing a whopping $65 million, $25 million of which Kasanoff raised himself, and then went on to make a staggering 75,000. The monumental loss has been attributed to a lot of factors, the main being the fact that in 2002, when the film was about to be released, hard drives were stolen during a break-in at Threshold Santa Monica offices. Instead of continuing with the film like anyone with even a minor amount of brain cells would have done, Larry decided to start the entire production over again, this time veering away from the original cartoonish feel and using motion capture instead. At this point, motion capture animation was still in its early stages, meaning the actors had to stare straight ahead and move very little, leading to the stiff performances and the characters not quite looking at each other. Larry decided to direct the film himself, despite never supervising a full-length animated feature, and was infamous amongst the animators for giving directions such as requesting things to be more awesome or 30% better. One disgruntled former employee even vented all his frustration on the review section of the UK version of Amazon, and given that it's a British website, I thought the appropriate thing to do would be to read his quote like Bricktop from Snatch. Larry Kastanoff is a talentless, classless scumbag that should be banned from Hollywood until the end of time. I can't tell you how many times this moron to our production with his brainless input. It has literally cost the production company millions of dollars. After Food Fight failed to make its 2002 release, it was supposed to be released in 2005, which it missed, and it then went on to miss its 2006, 2007 and 2009 release dates. Eventually, Kasanoff was removed from the project, and in 2011, Food Fight was hastily completed and auctioned off for 2.5 million for a direct-to-DVD release, with a lot of the scenes left unfinished. 
Food Fight tells the story of a bunch of brand icons, or Ikes, coming to life after their store, Marketopolis Market, closes at night. An interesting fact about Marketopolis Market is that it happens to be right down the street from Delhi Rama Delhi and the hair salon salon. It's never made clear the connection between the two worlds and how the characters can travel from one to the other. In one scene where the characters do venture into the store in the daytime, the transition is never shown. They simply just appear in the store. So Dex Dog Detective, aka Indiana Bones and the Lost Bark, aka Leg Humphrey Bonegart, is a private detective slash serial mascot that fights crime in the city during the day. Or night. Or whatever. He is in a bizarre relationship with this girl, Sunshine Goodness, a half-cat, half-human raisin mascot who goes missing early in the film. It would seem that early in production, Dex was supposed to be a human character, which would somewhat justify their interspecies relationship. For some reason later in production, the character was changed to a dog, giving us the half-dog, quarter-human, quarter-cat crime against nature we have now. I just hope to God they never decide to have a baby. Around the time that Sunshine goes missing, Brand X appears, led by the legitimately terrifying Mr. X, who seeks to rid the world of the colourful Ikes and replace them with their own generic products. And in case you hadn't realised yet that Brand X were the bad guys, Larry felt it necessary to give them the uniforms of the German soldiers from two different world wars. Nothing like some Nazi imagery to spice up a kid's animation. The rest of the film revolves around Dex trying to discover the whereabouts of Sunshine Goodness while Brand X slowly kills off the Ikes one by one in order to gain control of the store. One of the most jarring parts of Food Fight is the amount of blatant sexual innuendo, especially for a film aimed at children. Oh, Mama Sita! Yo, sweet cakes! Oh, nice packaging! How about some chocolate frosting? Get a shelf life. I like to butter your muffin! One of the animators for the film even said, I thought, they're just having fun writing this. It won't make it into the finished film. It did. Size only counts for men. Uh, are those melons real? I'm not the one who's going to be puppy whipped. You cold farted itch. The most unusual sexual relationship is between Vlad Chokul and Daredevil Dan, which starts off innocent but very rapidly becomes very disturbing. Is that the enticing scent of rich creamy chocolate? Do you go out much, by the way? Because I like to dance a little myself. I dance a bit. And with you on my back yet? Not that I mind that. I don't know who thought it would be funny to have one character constantly be sexually aggressive to another in a kid's animation, but let me tell you, sexual harassment is never funny. Believe me, I know. And then there's this green guy and all his bizarre, uncomfortable fetishes. I think I just wet myself. It feels rather nice. More fun than a spanking. Food Fight also spends a great deal of its time sexualizing its characters, none more so than Lady X. They even have one scene where she enters Rex's office early in the film wearing a schoolgirl outfit for no reason other than it's sexy. It seems that even the moral of Food Fight is, hot people are good and pure and ugly people are evil. And when a hot person is evil, it's really because they've had an ugly person inside them all along. Sunshine chip slapped her back to ugly! Gross! Food Fight's views on the importance of attractiveness in women are further hit home by Count Coco Fang's remarks about Lady Prune. She's also hideous. <laughs> no, I mean, come on, she's very unattractive. Because she is, she's a prune! What do we expect from her? Why are we shy about these things? Be what you are, that's what I say. In her case, it's <laughs> horrible. An interesting piece of dialogue coming from an actor who does, himself, look like a prune. There's also a great deal of violence for a film that's supposed to be directed at children, and none more so than in the bar fight scene. So Daredevil Dan and the human testicle get into an argument over winning the affection of Lady X when a fight breaks out, causing the entire club to break into a food fight. Food fight! The funny thing is that even though the movie is called Food Fight, the characters don't as much throw food at each other as much as they just beat the living shit out of each other. After about a minute, Dex decides that he's finally had enough. And now, it's time to play another round of Guess What Happens Next! Does Dex break up the fight and explain that violence is never the solution and convince the characters to make up. Join in on the fight, roundhouse kicking the human testicle to the other side of the room, or walk outside, sit down on the front steps and pull out a photo of sunshine while the chaos continues behind him. And the answer is... Here's B. I'm too hot for you. Ah! 
Yes, it seems like for an animated film directed at children, the message is, remember kids, if a friend of yours ever gets into a violent altercation, the best thing to do is attack whichever one isn't your friend as suddenly and as violently as possible. There are many attempts at humour in this film, all of which fall completely flat. Hell. Oh, I'm so excited! Look at the table! I'm stuck in the mud! It's so disgusting! I want to see what's under that hat! I love you, kitten. There's supposed to be this hilarious recurring joke of Mr. Clean constantly getting muck on him throughout the film. The issue is that not only does the mess seem to just fall straight off him, but he doesn't really seem to care. Another running gag is the old lady constantly hitting the shopping trolley with her cart, which is less of a running gag and more just the animators not being bothered creating another establishing shot for the supermarket. And who could forget the tedious food puns littered throughout Food Fight? Some of which make absolutely no fucking sense, and honestly, they make me a bit nauseous. You can kiss my additives! What the fudge? Time to banana split out of my club. Right, that's enough, stop. The oven timer's ticking. Oh, if I can cut the mustard anymore. Let's snap, crackle, and pop out of here. Let's strawberry jam out of here. No, seriously, stop. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a spam. You better go easy on the potato juice before you get... <laughs> ...chip-faced. <laughs> Due to the fact that Food Fight was cast a decade prior to being released, a lot of the casting choices didn't really age well, like Coke Vacuum Charlie Sheen, Just to find us go, yeah. Eva Longoria and Hilary Duff, and who thought Chris Kattan would ever go out of style? <laughs> they also managed to get Christopher Lloyd involved in the film, which isn't surprising when you consider his track record with films like My Favourite Martian and Baby Geniuses. Tomorrow you will explain how a mere toddler manages to escape from a laboratory 25 storeys below ground. The rest of the cast just seem to be made up of a bunch of minor celebrities and a lot of, hey look, it's X from Y. It's Wayne from Whose Line Is It Anyway? It's George's dad from Seinfeld. It's the doorman from Seinfeld. It's the voice of Joe from Mafia 2. Whose very thick New York's accents gets very annoyance after a while. That name don't ring no bells. Extra detective always mopped up our troubles, Gabish. He's got caviar, filets mignons, and an outstanding array of fruits and vegetables. It's the guy from Independence Day, and wait, is that Frau Brucker? Frau Brucker. The worst casting choice was Larry casting himself as the character of Cheezel T. Weasel. Whose accent and comedic timing so strange. I fear this will not end happily for me. As I mentioned earlier, I don't have a lot of experience when it comes to the production of animation, but I know what shit looks like. And this film not only takes the cake, it steals it from a blind, deaf orphan's fifth birthday party. Christ, Reboot was released 18 years prior and looks far better than this shit. The whole thing feels incredibly unfinished, most likely a result of being hastily completed for its director dvd release. Like the crowd scenes, for instance, that feature the same six or so animated people jumping up and down at the same time in various increments. And who could forget the dancing scene from the Coco Cabana, where the dancers seem to be doing the same four dances over and over. There's the monkey. Reach for the sky. Bobbing up and down. And whatever this is supposed to be. After about an hour of absolutely nonsensical, offensive and gut-wrenching plot, the Ikes and Bran X finally engage each other in the eponymous food fight. Food! The fight basically consists of Ike standing in the middle of the street while Bran X launches a barrage of various foodstuffs at them, all of which bursts into the same shitty cloud of smoke with different colours. Even the tomato sauce manages to turn itself into a cloud of smoke upon impact. The confusing thing about the entire battle is the loss factor. Presumably the projected food can't actually kill anyone as General X gets hit in the face and seems to be unaffected. After being hit, what's stopping the characters from just getting up and walking away? Is the food toxic? And why are they all outside in the first place? Why do they all just run in a straight line? Have none of them seen Prometheus? And when they're about to fight the flying things, why does Dan start washing himself and hypnotizing himself? And why is he meditating? And how does the human testicle witness Mr. X stepping on the packet during the day? Did he see it? Because when the camera zooms in, He's just a still image on a packet. Are all the Ikes distributed to all of their corresponding products during the day? And if so, then how does Dex and Dan manage to- Oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. All in all, the whole fight scene goes on for an agonizing 10 minutes of your life that you will never get back. 
Food Fight is a despicable, awful, and offensive attempt at making a kid's animation and should be sent to the edges of the universe to remain till the end of time. Baked by popular demand, I judge shit films based on five categories. Number one, laughability. There are laughs to be had in Food Fight, but they're few and far between. You'll just spend most of the movie with your mouth agape wondering, did they just say that? Number two, rewatchability. One viewing of this film is enough, as you'll no doubt spend the rest of your life trying to erase it from your memory. Number three, pace. The pacing is okay, at least there's a large variety of scenes with lots of characters to keep you interested, but the actual food fight feels like it goes on forever. Number four, production value. Awful, awful, awful shit, piss, fart, can't shit, piss, awful. And number five, intention. This film was obviously made just to make money, and that was it. There is no artistic integrity, and I fucking hate this film. I fucking hate Larry Kasanoff, he's a wanker, and I hope they tattoo Food Fight on his forehead so he can never work in the entertainment industry ever again. I give Food Fight minus one star, and should only be watched by those who wish to know how not to make a kid's animation. So thank you for joining me on another episode of The Shit Flick Critic. I should have another one of these up by the end of the year. I just want to thank all my subscribers for being patient with me. I know there's been a gap, but I'm back into the rhythm of it, and I'm going to start making more. So please subscribe if you haven't already. Get your friends to subscribe. Get your dog to subscribe. Create an account for it, then get it to subscribe. Get your grandparents to subscribe, because I will be making more. So just thank you so much. And if you want to see any of my other episodes, I'm going to have The Room over here. Samurai Cop. A Birdemic down here. What was the other one I did? Troll 2 and then Manos, smack bang in the middle. So thanks a lot.